that was a LinkedIn live stream and a half. So I'm recording this after I did the chat with Eric and Matt, which is fabulous. So if you just ignored the day when I shared that, you need to go back and have a look because it was really good. So I don't know when I'm going to share this, but you know, just, just, just work with me on this one. And, but I did, I think it was like last week or maybe the week, week before, you know when I talked about the rationale behind me doing my live streams and why I do these live conversations, why I don't um, like padlock it, you know, make people register and only see it on Zoom or whatever else it is. And I know it does come with its risks, you know, it does remind me that like, I know how tiring and just downright bloody frustrating it is to try and get everybody else to understand this space right and why as black people we're not shutting up you know like i get that but if we only spend for those of us who've got the fortitude right i'm not saying for everybody so i'm just i'm going to talk to people those who are like right listen i'm here i'm ready to rock and roll this is what i've got to do and i'm ready to do my bit now, if you spend your time talking and engaging with people who see the world exactly as you do, who believe the same things that you do, who want to fight the same fight as you do in the same way that you want to fight, it's very safe and it's very comfortable. It is harder to talk to people who, on a scale of like complete disagreement to, you know, listen, get back to the plantation fields, you know what I mean? That is harder and i'm not saying just to be crystal clear eric and matt weren't there but but we are all we were all trying to push for the same direction but we have very very different thoughts and opinions and perspectives all three of us you know so even me as a black woman and you put somebody else who's another black woman and somebody else who's another, another black woman we will all have different opinions and um, so the dynamic i think of having me with two white men who were american and loads of different other lived experiences that they brought, both brought to the conversation, which was great. But like Matt and I always say this, is just like, we can't, the safety in the echo chamber, but some of the progress, truth be told, also needs to be made with those people are like on the fence. So they haven't really put one leg in, I'm just gonna cling to the way things are and not allow black people the equality and I'm not going to step up and do anything I'm not going to acknowledge I'm just going to pretend life is the same and hunky-dory and sit in my armchair and hope they're not going to do another black performance on Britain's Got Talent do you know what I mean there are people who like convinced is not the right word but I think who who may be open to listening to talking to engaging they're not going to make it easy because for whatever reason they're going to be hold on, holding on to their righteousness, you know, and it's this whole idea of fighting, fighting for what's right versus fighting to be right are two very different things. But it does feel more gratifying, I guess, when you can get somebody to see your perspective not so they agree with you because it's not about the agreement factor it's just it's more about giving them a different perspective so maybe in their own way they can go off and affect change somehow so you're affecting in a positive way one more person that you wouldn't have done if you just spend all your time all of your time talking and hanging out you know virtually and physically with people who get it like I, listen don't get me wrong like sometimes you need it just to like bolster from all the bullshit that gets thrown you away you know and i need sometimes to just fall into like literally fall into the arms of people who just get what i'm trying to do but a lot of the time i'm talking to people who kind of get it but not really who want to do something about it because they have to not because they want to and I can choose like I do have the freedom of choice to be able to spend all my time with people that get it but I don't I like balance it out for my sanity but don't underestimate the inroads that you can make with people who might not be far 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 on the racist side but you know who might be open and it's just one more conversation that you can have with them not in terms of a caption on a post, but just talking to them, having a virtual coffee, and be willing to, oh, and I hate this phrase, lean in, because it's so like, uh, but we do have to lean into that conversation knowing that we may not win. 
you know. I step into virtual boardrooms trying to talk to leaders about this, knowing that it's a third, a third, a third. A third of them are like, yes, absolutely. Third are like, mmm, you know, what about, what about, what about? And the other third are just silent because this is not their jam and they have no intention of doing anything differently. So they're just going to stay quiet and hope that my hour or two hours is up. You know, but I do it because I strongly believe that we have to do this. But I also recognise that I can't always spend all my time with people who agree <laughs> with me. Like it feels good, but you know, and also don't forget as well, partly it is the way I'm wired. It's my competitive spirit. I like a challenge, you know, I don't mind an argument. I don't very rarely do I take it personally unless I feel like somebody is coming for me and then if they come for me then it is all over because I will push back twice as hard but I like a good debate so I think maybe and that's is that why maybe maybe it's a personality thing actually so maybe everything that I've just said probably has no weight because actually it's about personality and I just I don't mind an argument <laughs> let me in let me in let me in so yeah anyway just a few thoughts See you tomorrow.